Hello, everybody. That's my gun. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's 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 how we're doing this today. I also have the year one emblems on the E5. Um, there's a lot of really cool things that are going to be coming up in the game in the next couple of, I, I would say, the next two weeks. There's massive deals going on right now, and if if you're a, a pay-to-play player, I'm going to tell you now, you are in for one heck of a week. Um, honestly, for anyone you know that's not pay-to-play, but you do have tens, save your silver bonuses right now because tier 10 silver bonus is coming in on the 29th until I believe it is the 6th or the 5th. So there's going to be double silver. Um, along with that, there's also massive deals going on right now. So we have the two times silver bonuses that you can buy stacks of 50 for uh, 7,480 gold, which you know, that's kind of pricey, but if you're the player that wants to invest in this, right now is going to be the time to make silver. I am going to buy one more stack of these. I already bought one, but I want to get another. Uh, next thing up, we have the repair kits, and hand repair kits, med kits, fire suppression. Don't know why, uh, it, honestly, how often it gets out of fire. Um, enhanced rations, med kits, and repair kits. These are going to be amazing, honestly, but don't buy the uh, small fries. You want to go after the big boys, the 100s. Because for 18, I just opened up a whole new post. Nope, we're going to close that. But, yeah, I'm probably going to be buying like a thousand of these each. And I'm going to spend the 29th to the 6th or whenever it is just making stupid amounts of silver. Because that's literally what the game is going to be for the next two weeks. And I'm, I'm going to go nuts on that. Um, other than that, not a whole lot. I got a replay for you guys today. Um, save your boosters. Wait for that tier 10 silver bonus event to pop up. And it's going to be awesome. Save your bonuses. Wait till the 29th of November. If you're catching this video late. I'm sorry you missed out. Enjoy the gameplay. Um, yeah, dude. There's a lot of silver that's going to be dropping like crazy. Uh, I do have recommended tanks, though. My recommended tanks, uh, Wargaming still have not fixed these, and it's funny. So if you guys are looking to make silver, IS-4, 279E, and 268 version 5, the reason why I recommend these tanks is because look at the cost of your standard rounds and your high explosives. 200 on the 268 version 5, and then we take a look at the 279E, IS-4 has got the exact same pricings. 130 in your standards and 130 in your HE. If you're looking to make a lot of silver coming the 29th, the version 5, 279E, IS-4. Those are going to be your best silver makers in the game for the next couple of days. So if you guys have your hands on those tanks and you're looking to uh, rock it and get stuff running, those are the three tanks to use. Other than that, we're going to be using the E5 in today's replay. We have optics. Um, advanced loader. I uh, can't say gun rammer anymore because apparently that's just obsolete and wrong terminology anymore. And Vince, uh, my commander. Um, I'm working on crews. I'm testing out new skills, new setups, and one new perk I've added is Last Stand. Uh, Last Stand, I have had a lot of situations where this has activated, and the crew, the performance skyrockets your view range is increased by 25%. So it's like having um, the old binocular system in game, but permanently active, stacked on top of optics. So 35% bonus to your view range, not including what your premium consumable does. Um, I think the most I've seen was seven, no, 650 to like 670 view range. And that, yeah, it, it 445, if they were behind a bush, I saw them. Nuts. Okay, we have six cents, rapid loading born leader. Along with that, we have steady aim for the little bit of accuracy bonus, clutch braking, situational awareness, track mechanic, last stand, off-road driving. Uh, last stand, I originally run rapid aim. So if you guys are looking to copy my crew on this and not run my test crew, uh, rapid aim is the perk I would use originally. Um, if you guys want to give that a shot and try it out, I'm telling you now, the reaction time that you can get out of it is just super quick. Okay, so Arctic region inside the E5. 
Arctic region, this is one of those maps that, you know, a lot of people struggle with. Uh, there's multiple positions to take. There's always new things to do, new things to try out. Completely furious on the back of the tank and hot-headed on the right side of the tank. I just thought it was funny. Now, today, let's talk about prioritizing your targets. Prioritizing your targets and maybe a little bit more talking about uh, knowing your position, knowing how to aim. Um, I have been watching my own replays and going over them as much as I can to get a better idea on how I play to give you guys better tips and little things to do. Um, one tip I have, I don't have any recordings of it, so I will wait to share that tip in a separate video whenever I do get it. And I'll, I'll make sure to actually focus it out. But it involves knowing your terrain, uh, where your gun is, using your reticle to know how well angled you are against your opponent and how much your tank is actually exposed against your opponent. Um, that's something that it, I didn't really notice it until I was watching my own replays and then I found out that is exactly what I am doing and it's a completely different style of play and it does make a big difference. I didn't, there's, there's things that a lot of Unicum players do that is just self-conscious and you don't even think about it in me. I didn't think about this. So I, I do want to share that with you guys, your reticle, but I don't have any um, gameplay that's going to show it off. Um, another thing is from this distance where I am, even though I can aim over the ridge and see him, he can see my entire tank because I can see his entire tank because of how far away we are from that hill. So right here, since I can only see his hatch, that's all he can see of me as well. But if you're closer up, using your reticle to know how overexposed you are in for underneath the turret of the Paladin with heat rounds, you're going to go through, raise the gun to block damage from hitting the hatch. Paladin does have 258 premium pin, and those shells are very, very red flying at my tank. So those are clearly premium rounds coming from the Paladin. Now, this position here on E5 and 6, right dead, dead center, you can kind of feel like you're getting caught out. So every once in a while, watching the map, you can think, okay, am I safe to make a push? Me, I felt comfortable making a push because now I'm going to be spotting out all the enemies in the background. Already up to 840 assists. This is actually helping out the team that's further back at H9. And I'm able to come up, get the assist, provide a little bit of assistance. Maybe completely with a shot there against the uh, Death Star. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. Uh, but it probably won't because of his position. Just making sure to angle against the 13105 just in case it decides to rush me. And there's the Paladin. Nice little snapshot. I did take a little bit of damage, but nothing too crazy. Paladin only has a 230 alpha. Um, honestly, if they wanted to buff that tank a little bit more rather than giving it a reload. Um, the reload's nice. But maybe raising the damage up to 250 would have made that a little bit more threatening. But it... It's nice to see that they're not buffing the damage of something that has an extremely fast fire rate and they're allowing it to keep the fire rate and just amplifying something that it's doing good at. Um, there's a lot of buffs that just barely hit Russian lines as well. A couple I don't agree with and a couple that I'm completely okay with, but a few of them I don't agree with. I'll share those on a later date after I get to do some testing inside the tanks to get an idea how they're performing. But yeah. Okay, so right now, talking about prioritizing targets. I'm not worried about the E50. So if you look at the top of the map at A5, they kind of have some shots coming down here, so I'm not super worried about the E50 to my left. I'm more worried about the Chieftain with its rate of fire. E50, sure, he's got a good rate of fire, 390 alpha if he's running the 105, or 280 alpha if he's running the 88. Judging by the damage I was taking, it is the 105, but... You know, kind of in a spot where I need to start trying to make some plays. So, rather than allowing the E50 get hits on me, let's push up to the rock, forcing him to come down if he wants to get a shot on us now. And then to pop out, get some spots. So we're trying to light up the Chieftain, getting hit in the side by a Ragnarok, and yep, we bounced two of the shells, one of them penetrated. Um, I was kind of hoping to get hit one more time by any tank in this scenario. Because I, I'm testing out perks. I've been swapping up crews. And I'm hating the fact that I have to spend 90 gold to swap out one perk. And um, I put it up in a community post. 
saying, you know, I'm, I'm feeling a hit because I'm literally feeling a hit. It is, it is redonkulously expensive right now to respec one perk. And I'm screenshotting them, respecing them to the exact same setup that I had before, but swapping out one perk. And it's just, yeah, so far I've spent in the range of 4,000 gold in the past week just on respecting crews which is kind of pricey and snapshot into the ragnarok and setting him on fire that's always a good good roll but he had a fire extinguisher so may, maybe maybe talking about the fire extinguishers at the start of the video i said eh, you know how often to get set on fire well uh i i guess i set him on fire and his fire extinguisher was useful so me though i don't really feel like i get set on fire too much compared to most um yeah, we do get a shot into the, uh, looks like the gun mantle. We hit the under part of the turret there on the M103. But, you know, we're, we're in this position here on Arctic region. You know, you push up, get the spots to help your team across the way. As you can see on the map, they're having a way better matchup down in that bottom section there. And with the really spotty haul armor on the bottom of the E5, we're able to kind of over-angle, extend out a little bit more than needed. Uh, but... Type 5s with the 14 centimeter and with 15. So 14, 140 millimeter guns and bigger can overmatch the lower part of the sidearm or the E5. So depending on the targets you're pulling out again, you do want to be a little bit careful. And even though they buffed that to 185 on the Chieftain, we're still able to go through because he's not utilizing his gun depression. He had to use elevation there against us. So he was missing out on a little bit of an advantage against us so rather than pushing up then again he was kind of in a three-way crossfire because we had the heavy at g5 as well and getting enemies in crossfires that's always the way to play just trying to get as many people as you can in crossfires and i do know i have a lot of premium ammunition on my e5 uh this is one of those tanks whenever i pull it out i'm not here to be your friend i pull this tank out and i go for the win um, I have a premium account. I have a ridiculous way to make silver right now, which is no different than anyone else. I play tier eights. The thing is, I think one of the best things I can tell you on how to make silver fast and effectively is just tap X in the load screen. Don't even go back to garage. Just tap X for the next match. You do that for five matches, that's 500,000 depending on how your matches go. Um, even if you do a little bit of damage and you do a swap out, it's still a little bit of money each time you do it. So, in the E5, good game there with a total of 9,000 damage combined. So, we did 4,587 dealt. We, we took an aggressive position, and that position, it's not always going to work out. You know, it's not always going to play out like this. There are going to be times that... You know, you're not going to get in there and the matches are going to end up like that. They will be a lot different. They they always are. It's always situational. But taking those positions that can be beneficial to you is one of the best ways to make your plays and to go at it as much as you possibly can. And yeah, not really a whole lot to go over about it, but keeping track of your gun depression so let's say you're approaching a ridge line and you're aiming in. Okay, you aim in. Let's say you have a hill right in front of you. Use your reticle and your aiming to know how much your tank is exposed. If you're a center mounted turret, you gotta think how, how far out is their frontal hull compared to, you know, your turret, is your frontal hull overexposed? Or let's say like um, you're in a tank that has a front mounted turret looking using your reticle whenever you aim in to find out where you're located to be able to take those shots to pop up, only exposing your turret and barely cresting the ridge line. Whenever I say barely cresting, this is the ridge in front of you, this is your gun. This is your gun. If you're able to come up here and see the entire tank, that's a problem. Your goal is you wanna get your gun lined up perfectly with just the crevice of the hill. You do that, that's gonna be a big game changer in your hull down tanks and even in your moderately armored tanks with really good gun depression. Um, other than that, dude, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. I will try my best to get back to them as much as I can. I always do. Um, but the tip I have for the next couple of weeks 
break habits, break bad habits of pushing out, overexposing, and, you know, play your best takes. Even if you're struggling inside of them, you know, we always have bad matches, we always have bad lineups. One of the best things you can do, go derp. Go high explosive. Pull out something that's just a meme and play that for a little while. Like, don't be flustered about it. You need to calm down a little bit. It's something we all need to do. Please don't play artillery, though. I, I don't, don't, don't. Okay, it hurts. It hurts me. All right, it, it is, it's pain. <laughs> I'm dying over here just trying to keep a straight face talking about Artie. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah. If there's anything that you guys would like to see or like me to cover, please let me know, know down in the comments section as my brain is just smooth. I need to just end it. I need to just stop the video now and leave and just call it good and just stop while I'm ahead before. I, you know, I'm already a Muppet. You guys already know this. You guys have... I'm clicking buttons. You guys have a great day. I'm out of here.